It has been a few weeks. Actually, it's been a month since I've uploaded anything on YouTube. I've been taking it easy, laying low. I was feeling run down, and I caught some kind of bug. And I was miserable for a while, but I'm doing a little better now. Thanks for asking. Anyway, on a previous video, I mentioned that one of my videos got deleted. I was checking the view counts on recent videos, and one video, I got the message the video was deleted. And it said I deleted it. And that's bullshit. I did not delete that video. Then I noticed another video was deleted. And no living creature at Google or YouTube wants to respond to any of my queries. They're still posted on my BitChu channel and my Minds account. But in that video, I talked about getting back into photography. I put my photography and everything else on the back burner when my mother got sick. It's been a couple of years now, and she's confined to a wheelchair. And I take her out with me when I go take pictures, and it can be a challenge pushing around that wheelchair while cotting around all my camera equipment. I bought one of those backpack uh, camera bags. That helps. But still, it's a challenge. And there are some places that I just can't go with her. I would like to go, usual places that I take pictures, but I can't go there anymore with her. But there's plenty of other places that I can go take pictures. And I plan on uploading segments on photography. I'm talking about all the camera gear I've acquired in the past couple of months. And I don't even want to give you a number on the money I've spent on camera gear. I mean, if it's not through the roof, it's put a hole in it the size of Bambi. And I'm not done yet. It's just gear that I've been wanting to get way back when, and I just never did. And I've been watching videos on photography because I really want to get it right. I have been messing with photography going back to the days of film. I had a couple of Canon film cameras. I had four lenses. I even had a portable darkroom. I had it set up in my bathroom. I had my enlarger sitting on a rolling stand that was made for a television. And I used to roll it into the closet and roll it out when I was going to use it. It was crazy. But I've always played at it. It was always an on and off affair with me. I want to get a little more serious. I want to take it to a whole new level. And since I did mention film, I want to talk about a pet peeve of mine. I guess that's what you call it. Some have called it an obsession. Why do people continue to call it filming when there is no film involved? You're recording. Still photography, video recording, or audio recording. You're not taping the game to watch later. You're not taping that song for your friend and basically violating copyright laws that could get you and your friend in jail. For some reason, it just drives me nuts when I hear someone say film or filming when no such medium is being used. Same with taping. I know there is still a small niche market for magnetic tapes, but 99% of you are recording on your smartphone. Video, audio, digitally recording on a solid state device void of film or magnetic tape. I try to keep this obsession to myself, but sometimes I can't help but leave a comment on a video where such a term is being misused. I mean, it's just me. Anyway, this is the very first stupid show. That is a repackaging of my series in the study in the depths of human stupidity. This was an idea sprouting from the darkest corners of my mind. Most people never allow such thoughts to emerge into the general public. But I'm no ordinary person. I am beyond any frosted specialty of binary hubris. Anyway, don't ask me where that came from. I haven't a clue. Anyway, after I had volume 8 of my human stupidity study uploaded, I came to the conclusion the series needed to be repackaged. And I came up with this twisted idea. So let's once more go back to photography. Because I like doing wildlife photography. And the one thing about wildlife photography is you have to come to understand animal behavior. You have to learn their habits and their body language. You've got to know 
there is a line in the sand that you cross at your own risk. Case in point. Never get too close to a mother with young. <laughs> know that most of these animals are territorial. <laughs> it's healthy that both man and beast hold a respective fear of each other. One reason animals lose fear of humans is because stupid humans feed them. I see it all the time, be it a park or beach or whatever, despite signs being posted all over telling you not to feed the wildlife. Humans do it anyway. And I understand the mindset. They're so cute and cuddly. And it's so cool that you made friends with a wild animal. Yeah, you go, Tarzan. The only problem is, they're not really your friends. They come up to you expecting food, and if you don't have food, it can get dicey. <laughs> Massage. <laughs> <laughs> you ask anyone who deals with animals on a regular basis, they will tell you getting bit is inevitable. I went to a cockfight one time. Afterwards, I could not walk straight for three days. It's not a good idea to get too close when they are feeding because they will think you're trying to steal their food and act accordingly. Octopuses are very curious creatures and surprisingly intelligent. And they will use their tentacles as we use our hands. But one thing I could never understand is why they don't call the male of the species an octocock. <laughs> William Congrave was an English playwright and poet of the Restoration period. He is the one who coined the phrase music soothes the savage beast and did not know what the fuck he was talking about. Okay, this is why they make large telephoto lenses, 200 millimeter, 300 millimeter, 400 millimeter, and if that's not enough reach, you can get extension tubes or a teleconverter to increase the focal length. Then you can be at a safe distance to photograph the lethal lizard. The lens he has on looks like an 85, maybe 135 millimeter lens. It's a portrait lens. He is totally oblivious to the danger, literally right under his nose. Hey, amigo, go Hey, it's there. Antonio! There's one right there! Antonio. And his friends are warning him of the danger. And what does he do? He tells them to be quiet. This idiot deserves to be eaten. Oh, no, no. Oh, shit! Oh, oh, shit. shit. Come, 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 here. come! That'll take five years out of your life. Anyway, it is now time for the new portion of the show, which we entitle, How Is This News? From UPI.com, Skia meets goat at 10,000 feet at a Montana resort. March 15th, a Skia 
at a Montana resort captured video of his unexpected encounter with a curious mountain goat at 10,000 feet up a mountain. The skier said he was traversing or skiing laterally on a narrow path on his way to dropping into Cold Spring at Big Sky Resort in Montana when he encountered the shaggy goat right next to the path. How often does one get to see a goat? Well, being a goat at 10,000 feet, the man said. I don't know. I've never been at 10,000 feet. I mean, we're talking about a goat. It's not a Yeti. It's not a Bigfoot. It's not even a newly discovered species. It's a fucking goat. He said he decided to take video of the goat with his cell phone after talking with an Idaho couple who didn't believe he had actually seen the wild animal. You're telling me he stopped skiing for the sake of calling a couple in Idaho. I'm assuming he knows these people. Anyway, though the gentleman was a ski instructor himself, clearly his home mountain didn't have goats, the filmer said. Filmer, here we go. No, he's not a filmer. He wasn't filming. He was recording this on his cell phone, onto a solid-state device containing no film. You mean videographer, recording, not filming, shooting a video. Get it right. The man said he was careful not to offend the creature while shooting the video. Finally, you got it right, while shooting the video. That wasn't so hard. A fellow ski instructor says a goat can become defensive and push a skier over cliffs. But big ski ski patrollers say that these goats are accustomed to seeing them work high above timberland, the man said. That's what I was waiting for in the video. The goat pushing him off the cliff. Because that would be news. This is not news. People encounter wildlife all the time. As I speak to you, people are encountering wildlife. Ask the people of India about wildlife encounters. And as you have heard, I ran for president, and that didn't quite work out the way that I had hoped. Uh, did you know in Hinduism, the cow is revered as a source of food and a symbol of life and may never be killed? Well, at least the milk-producing cows. Even back in ancient time, only the bulls were killed in religious sacrifice, but not milk-producing cows. You can't kill a milk-producing cow. The five products of a cow are milk, curds, ghee butter, urine, and dung, all used in religious rituals. And there's plenty of dung being produced here for a year's supply of religious rituals. But I did write a book called What Happened? because I wanted in the book to try to explain for myself and my supporters and for history what I thought had gone on in that most consequential of American elections. In the book, I pull back the curtain on an unprecedented election what I call the first reality TV election in American history. I talk about what happened, the moments that were difficult, the moments I want to remember forever, accepting the nomination as the first woman to run for president of a major political party. Well, isn't that special? I'm still proud of the campaign we ran and the 65.8 million Americans who supported it. But the book is as much about the future as it is about the past. So what I want to talk about today is not just about what happened, but what is happening in America, in India, and around the globe.
Thanks for stopping by and for tuning in. And please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until we talk again, I want you all to be well and enjoy life.